Here's how you can recreate this editing style using just a little bit of Lightroom Classic. If you want to follow along, click on the link in the description of the video to download the raw file and now let's jump into it. Here we are in Lightroom. Let me say right away, we are working with an HDR image. That means we do have a lot more dynamic range to work with highlights and the shadows, which we have quite a bunch in this image. So let's go ahead and expand the basic panel. The first thing I want to do is to change the profile going from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape, just to bring in some more saturation and changing the profile also helps slightly brightening up those darkest areas. Next, I want to work on the white balance. For this shot, I have a very warm scene in mind, almost making it look like a golden hour shot. So that means we can simply bring up the temperature, introducing a lot more warmth to this image. Let's bring it up a little more and that's it. I don't think I'm going to touch the tint. So, so far the colors do look great. The next bigger thing we want to work on is the exposure. At the moment, the highlights are kind of blown out and the shadows are a little too underexposed. That's the reason for us to work with an HDR file to safely restore the details in those areas. I'm going to increase the exposure first and let's bring it up quite a bit. Right about here looks quite nice and I'm just aiming to restore details in the shadows with that because increasing the exposure obviously will blow out the sky even more. But don't worry, what we can do here is to bring down the highlights and we are going to safely restore details in the sky as well this way. Now I'm not going to drop the highlights all the way down. I do think having a little bit of overexposure just in this area looks quite nice for the effect I'm going to add in later with a bit of masking. So let's not drop the highlights further. Still, I think we can work a little more on the shadows. So let's bring them up. Just tickling out some more details from the shadows. And for the same effect, I'm going to bring up the blacks. We still have a bit of underexposure going on in this image. And by raising the blacks, I'm just trying to fix that. At the same time, I don't want to raise them too much because we are losing quite a bit of contrast that way. But at this point, we are at a good spot, I think. Then we can work on the dreamy look, which I also want to apply for this image. And I'm pretty much always using the same settings for this. First, I do want to introduce some texture because it just makes smaller details like the grass in here look just a bit better. And then I'm going to bring down the clarity to introduce softness. And I'm also going to bring down the dehaze for the same effect. And as always, keep in mind, bringing down the dehaze will brighten up this image slightly. So take a closer look at the Instagram while you're playing around with negative dehaze. I also want to bring up the vibrance and I'm going to raise it quite a bit because I want this image to be very, very saturated like that. Awesome. And at this point we are done with the basic adjustments and I think we can compare it to before we are quick. So we went from the image on the left to the version on the right and that's a huge transformation. Now I'm still not quite happy with a few things like the foreground or the sky. So to fix those, I want to apply a little bit of masking. Let's go ahead and open up the masking panel. And first off, let's work on the foreground. That's pretty easily done. Let's choose a linear gradient. And I just want to cover pretty much all the grass in the foreground like that. I'm going to apply a very rough edge here, as you can see. And in here, all I want to do is to bring up the exposure, making the foreground brighter. Again, this helps to add some contrast. And I also want to go down to clarity and texture. Here, introducing some clarity will make those grass patches just pop a little more. So I'm going to introduce quite a bit of clarity, which also makes the highlights look quite nice. And at the same time, let's introduce some more texture to give this area some more sharpness. Perfect. That looks awesome. Next up, the sky. As most of the times with my images, I want to target the blue part of the sky and just make it darker. Let's create a new mask, choose color range mask and click right there in the blue part. 
This is selecting most of the blues of the image. You can see it in the cloud down here, but of course you don't want to darken this area. So what we need to do here is to say subtract and let's choose linear gradient once more. And I'm just going to drag one up like that. And this way we are getting a very smooth gradient from top to bottom. With this color range mask, all I'm doing now is to bring down the exposure to make this top part a little darker, adding further contrast to this image. We can also introduce some more blues in here by bringing down the white balance temperature a notch. But I think this looks really, really good this way. All right, we are getting closer to a really good image. Now I do want to work on the glow effect for the center part. Therefore, I'm using a radial gradient and I'm making sure the center is right there on the brightest spot over the sun. And I'm also making sure it's covering the whole width of the image. Just like that, maybe rotate it a bit. And what I want to do with this one is to first bring up the blacks, which will add a very cool base for the glow effect. Just like this, I'm going to really pump it up here. I want this area to be very, very soft and dreamy. And then let's go down to the Clarity and bring this down to further soften this area. And finally, we can use negative dehaze for an even stronger glow effect. That's a bit too much, but I think this is looking really, really good. Now, due to those adjustments we just made, we did lose a bit of color in this radial gradient. I want to change that by going back to the white balance temperature. And I'm just pumping up the temperature a bit, introducing warmer color tones inside of this radial gradient. And just replicating some kind of golden hour light in here. All right, that looks great. However, I do want to add one more radial gradient. This time I'm making it rather small. Again, I'm trying to cover this spot right there over the sun. And again, I am going to increase the blacks here to further push that glow effect. I'm also going to bring up the temperature all the way to make this area really, really intense with that yellow. And I'm going down to the dehaze. And again, just bring down the dehaze to make the glow more intense in that tiny area. Perfect. Now there's not much left to do when it comes to the masking. One thing I want to do is to add another linear gradient for the very near foreground right there. And I'm doing this because I want to add some kind of vignetting effect, making the very bottom part darker. What I want to do here is to just bring down the shadows a tiny bit. And again, in this part, be careful with underexposure. And then let's add one more linear gradient for the top. So just the sky again. Here I want to introduce some contrast. And this kind of serves again as a vignetting effect for the top area. I think this looks great. Let me turn off the masks so you can see the difference from before to after. As always, masks have a really great impact on transforming your images. And if you're using them properly, you can see you can create some very cool effects even inside of Lightroom without the need of any Photoshop. So that's really, really cool. Done with the masking, now let's continue with a little bit of color grading. I want to go into the HSL panel first and let's work on the saturation. As I said earlier, I want this image to be vibrant. So let's bring up the yellow tones and the green tones. All right, that looks really good. And I think the blue part of the sky is a bit too strong. So I'm going to bring down the blue saturation and that's it. I also want to head into the luminance tab right there. And we can make the green area a little brighter by just bringing up the green luminance slider. This way we are adding some more contrast to this image and just give it some more punch. Also, we can bring down the blue slider to make the sky even darker. Perfect. Of course, this image is really good for split toning. So I also want to apply a little bit of that. Go ahead, expand the color grading tab 
and I want to work on the highlights and the midtones for this image. So for the highlights, we want to set up the hue going with somewhere right here in the yellow range. And I really want to bring up the saturation here to make the color visible. Wonderful. That's a really cool golden light effect. We can make it a little stronger by going into the midtones. And first again, let's add up the hue to something in the warm range and bring up the saturation. I actually think I want to introduce a blue color tone to the midtones. So have some nice color contrast going on because right now the warmer tones are kind of overwhelming. So let's change the hue going to somewhere in the blue color range. Of course, at this point, we do have a bit too much saturation for the blue tone. So I'm going to bring down the saturation here. Let's see. I just want to have a very subtle blue tone in the midtones. We don't want to raise the saturation too much because of that. But I think that's a pretty good spot. All right. Now the final color grading part will be done in the calibration tab. Here we want to work on the blue primary hue and saturation. You can do some pretty crazy things in here. For example, you can change the foliage color by bringing down the blue primary hue like that. This will obviously also change the sky to a very, very toxic like blue tone, which we don't want. So I'm not going to drop it too much. Let's say right about, right about here looks quite nice. And I also want to bring up the saturation. Okay. And that's it for the color grading. Again, we can take a look at the before image. And again, you can see it's a huge transformation from before. The colors do look much, much better. The glow effect is also very fitting for this scene. Now, the only thing that's left to do is the sharpening. So let's do that real quick in the details tab. As always, I'm using the same settings here. Bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking and then pump up the amount of sharpening. Done. And here we have the finished image. As you can see, with just a bit of Lightroom, you can do quite a lot of things. So why did this work for this shot? First, we had an HDR image, which means we had a lot of details to work with in the highlights and the shadows. This is very, very important for contrast-rich scenes like this. Then this was also shot during the right time. If you would take a daytime shot and apply the same settings, it would look really, really weird. Right now where the sun is standing, we get a little bit of subtle golden light already. So we are just enchanting it with the changes to the white balance and the color grading. So keep that in mind as well. So I hope this video was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.